Now on this video I'm going to try to show the technique I used to make this carbon fiber windshield for my FZR Yamaha. Now I want to tell a little story before we actually start making this part. This of course is my FCR, what was my track bike. Now for three years we used this as a track bike and one of the things that it was very prone to do, and I'm not sure why, was to crack the windshield at different places. This one broke this, and this is one of the first windshields, the one that came with the bike was broken, and I lived with that for a while. Then this one broke and what happens if this were an aircraft part with a crack as soon as you see a crack start in plexiglass you drill a little tiny hole most of the time that stops it but because these are probably vibration issues or and this this bike has taken a real beating i've gone through three windshields they've all cracked at different spots i don't know why in fact i think this one's cracking down here right now but what i decided to do as a test and this is really just a prototype test I want to see if I can make this part, laminate it with carbon fiber and put a really nice high gloss finish on it. And since I don't look through it when I'm riding on the street anyway, this, this might be a part that I can use for two purposes. I might like the way it looks on the bike. Number two, I can use it because you can't ride the bike without the windshield. The, the mirrors mount and everything flops around without the windshield. I, I may have a way that I can use this as a stopgap if I ever crack the windshield again, which probably is pretty likely. But So I want to try this. This is an experiment, of course, and we're going to see how it works. Now the first, the first step in anything I'm restoring or working on painting, making carbon fiber parts, all the things that we enjoy doing in the shop, I want to make the part as clean as possible. We have to fix that crack, number one. Number two... When I'm going to laminate it, I'm going to have to scratch or etch that outer surface. And then I'm going to have to decide, because I, ha I have some old resin. It's probably, probably a few, more than a few, probably eight, ten years old. And Luciano had a part he wanted me to make out of carbon fiber recently. So what I can do in this case is use the scraps. Whatever I have scrap. I made some parts for his RD. I made a dashboard a couple of years ago. Some other parts, but... So from this, I think I have about a yard of material left. First thing I'm going to have to do, once this is clean, I'll clean this and I'll get some prep wall on here also. I need to get some tape in the back. And I see I've got the clear tape. I'm going to take that old clear tape off, put some heavier tape on that, and then try to get some glue down in there just to avoid that cracking. Well, we'll hope, hope it isn't going to crack. Now with the tape still on one side, I dropped some CA in there and I'm just waiting for it to kick right now. And I'll just hold that. Once that kicks, I'll see how strong it is. I gotta clean this up, then I'm gonna tape the whole back of this. Now one of the things that'll get rid of all the tape residue is acetone, of course. Hopefully. Hopefully is always a big word here. Yeah, I got rid of it. Now, I still have the tape on the other side because I don't want to take a chance on weakening this. And, of course, I'm not going to see this side, so I don't care about the appearance of it. I wouldn't even care about that. In fact, eventually, I, I may even put another layer of carbon on the inside of this. But what I do want to do, I want to put tape on the whole inside of this windscreen right now. And what I'm doing, I put a couple of layers of Gorilla Tape before I masked it. Because, just to reinforce this, because I'm going to be sanding this and working on this side of it. I, I just don't want to reinforce that crack because that'll be the stress riser right there. Now the reason for masking tape and not just putting a piece of newspaper there because when we work on the other side, the resin is going to drip around and get all over this. It's going to make a mess. I've done this enough times to know whether I'm making a model airplane fuselage or wing or whatever that when you're working, the side that you're not going to, the, you're not going to be involved with it's not a great idea to hope that nothing gets on there. It's just better to protect yourself. We want to have, and as I think about this, this we want to have 
this side that when I pull off the tape, I can at least have the choice of sanding it, painting it black, putting another coat of carbon on it or whatever. And then at the end, of course, I'll just trim all this out. Okay, now the next thing is gonna to be to flip this, get a brand new razor blade, trim off all the extra. And we have that side hopefully protected or 99% protected. It'll just give us more choices when we go to do the final finish. Now, uh, an old X-Acto knife, a number 11 blade, by the way, is very handy for punching out the holes. In this case, we don't have to be real fancy because when we're all done, we're going to do the edge of this. We'll put a nice edge on everything, but I just want to get that out of there right now. And I want to ha I have the whole back is covered with tape and the front is ready to etch and then we'll be ready to put some carbon on this. Now to get a scratch on this, and I'll be careful over here where I have the joint, I want to get it just scratched. I don't want to... I don't want to wet sand it and have it smooth. I want an etch. I, see, what will happen, if I put epoxy on this, it's going to have a tendency to peel off. Over here, it'll get more of a tooth. So the idea is to get this etched up. Now, if you didn't have, it, if you didn't have an orbital, you probably could do that by hand with some 220 paper, but that's the surface we want to have to get the epoxy on. Now, whenever you do this kind of work, you find out, as soon as you do it a few times, the most challenging part, one of the most challenging parts, just like painting, how do you hold the part while you paint it? Well, while we put that laminate of carbon on the outside, how do we hold it? Well, I don't know. I tried a gallon jug, that looked a little too rickety. This looks like it may, and I'm taping it on because we're going to be using this. I need to be able to, to put some pressure on it. You need to keep it high enough off the ground. I guess that's going to work. I can put something under there. Now I have a couple of pieces of carbon here and since it's relatively expensive I don't like to waste it but this is twill this will really look nice if I can cut a piece oh yeah I got plenty plenty I'm just gonna cut it and I'm gonna try to leave enough on the edge that I can just blend it down so I had enough left on that roll to make actually two layers of twill this is six ounce twill, so that'll give me a 12 ounce final uh, part. Now, one of the things I wanted to do with this part is stiffen up the windshield. Because the whole purpose of doing this is so it doesn't crack. So, I know this will be a laminate, but if this isn't stiff enough, then when I'm all done, I have the option of turning it over and doing the same thing to the inside. So, I'll have a sandwich of carbon, plexiglass, and two more layers of carbon. And I think what that's going to do, it'll rigid up the fairing area, which on this bike, because I have track work, body work, the body work is really flimsy and rattly, so it's not like the stock body work would be. So this may be, as I think about this, this may be worthwhile. Now for a job like this, relatively low strength, Epon or Huntsman, not necessary. And the advantage of using West resin, it's a good bonding, laminating resin. It's basically, this resin was an originally made to laminate fiberglass over wood boats, so it has a good bond character. Relatively good strength. We have several different variations of, and the hardener comes in fast, medium, slow. The resin comes in various uh, concoctions. Usually if you go to a place that sells boat stuff, they'll have a good selection of this. If you don't have a gram scale, it's handy to have the pump so you can meter it out in either 5 to 1 or 3 to 1 ratios. But we're going to mix some of this up now. A lot of times what will happen with the resin, since this is several years old, it gets thick. It turns into a crystal. When you do that, you can use a hair dryer on the bottom of the can. It'll turn it right back into a liquid. Something a lot of people don't realize, epoxy. Well, I'm just going to use West. I shouldn't say all epoxy. All epoxy generally wants to go back to being a crystal at some point in time. When you let something sit in a can for a couple of years, it just becomes a crystal. Well, if you heat it up, another way to do this if you don't really want to do this, you can take a uh, 
Here's another good trick worth putting on a video. You can take and just put this in a tub of boiling water and what will happen at some point in time, uh, that crystal becomes liquid. And since we're going to, well, we need a little more than that. But I can just keep just keep decrystallizing it. And the, the hardener, and in time, after a year or so, it turns brown. Well, if that's, it's not objectionable on a black carbon part, but if you were doing e-glass, you wouldn't want to see that brown. Maybe that would be, uh, you have to basically go buy another thing of resin, of uh, hardener, I mean. Now, I'm going to try to do this part without a camera cut, because this is the part I think most people that uh, would be interested in making a part like this. Now, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a windshield. It could be the, uh, another example of a part that's easy to make, the heel guards on most sport bikes. This is a flux brush. I put a little bit of tape on the end of it. That's to keep it from ripping the glove. Because I don't want to get any slimier than a, this is going to be a slimy job. You could use a bigger brush, but then it just gets a little harder to control the resin. A part this size should be relatively easy to make. You can buy that carbon off the internet. You can actually buy what they call reject. It's got one bad thread in it, which if, if you're not going to see it, is not a problem. And then what you do, if you're going to laminate six or eight layers of it, you just put a good layer on the top and put the one with the bad thread, one bad thread in the back underneath. Well, done that with making model airplane parts for years. And just put the good, good piece on the, right on the top where you see it. Now, most of the motorcycle stuff is cosmetic. If you're going to try to make a, a muffler, I made a muffler for Ray for his SV650, a repair, it broke in half, I'm not sure that uh, we use Huntsman high temperature, same as I used when I made the R1 mufflers. You can laminate over a steel or an aluminum muffler, uh, relatively easy. I had at one time, one of the projects I never got to do yet, is I wanted to take a pair of expansion pipes to, for a two-stroke and laminate with Huntsman resin, high temperature resin, laminate over them with carbon fiber. So they looked carbon fiber. Now, the model airplane exhaust that I used to make were total carbon fiber. They were made on molds, but, and I'm sure you could do that, but. Now, here's my, here was my point. Get the whole part covered with resin. You want to have the, the, uh, the actual carbon cloth cut and ready to go, which we already have. So we want to see which way we would like this to laminate on there. Let's just see what's our lucky day. It looks like this is the nicest. And of course you can put it on 15 times if you want. And I don't think we want it that way. I had cut this so close. There we go. Actually, I should have marked it, but I guess after all these years, you just get forgetful. Okay, it looks like we got the weave pretty much the way we want it. Now, again, the good news about West Resin, if we were doing this with Epon, we'd have to pretty much have a fan going, be doing it outside. It's toxic. It's, it's really not something you want to use in your house. But this resin is really a pretty inert relative to all other resins I've used. Okay, we're gonna laminate this part down. Make sure we get a good soupy mix of resin on here. The mix on this is the West 105. Five parts of that to one part of 206 hardener. I use slow hardener, so it would give me a little more work in time. Since once I get to, done with this step, I'm just gonna let it dry for the next day or so. We have other shop projects we're working on. Waiting for that Benelli paint waiting for Mark to come over for some decal work. And we want to really get, hopefully summer is really on the way here, so. Now I may be rambling on and on here, but I wanted to do this whole piece without a camera cut. It was, I have a motive for that. Because a lot of people think, well, once you edit video down, yeah, you, you make something that's an hour look two hours, or, or, you, or you make it look better than it is, or. I love when I, an example is on uh, Bitchin' Rides, they sand the whole Buick down and they, they put, the car's got all in Bondo and 30 seconds later it's painted. Well, I want to see them paint it. 
I want to see the detail work, but it's just me. Yeah, and again, when I'm doing a prototype part like this, I'm basically using up a windshield that is scrap and resin that's 10 years old, at least 10 years old. And so I really have a low risk here. And if I don't like this, and I probably will buy a windshield anyway just to have it because I don't know what it is about me and these FCR windshields. They just, they take a beating, I guess. But I know part of it is when you have track work, body work on a bike, it's not as strong and as vi resonant vibrations and everything. I don't even have headlights on that bike, so that would absorb some of the vibration. And I have those big, bigger than stock mirrors, which put more, they're like bird wings, I guess. But, okay, now what I'm going to do, just make sure I don't have any real wrinkles in this, anything I don't like. Get the other piece of carbon. Again, we're trying to do it without a, without a camera cut. Let's see if we can get this on in uh, some reasonable fashion. Let's see, I think it would be this way. Is that it? Down, 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 down. Up around here. Now this piece I really want to flood with resin. I want to have enough resin on the top of this that I can sand it down and put my urethane finish when it's done. And actually I have seen bikes that, that have had, I guess, they're similar to where they have painted windshields and airbrush work and uh, I'll show what else, skulls, whatever. But we're going to try this. Again, it's a low risk port. One day a shop where actually it's going to go two days, maybe three days because I got to paint it. But in the meantime, I just ride another bike and that's it. Anyway, another thing, when I was learning how to do this type of work, there was no YouTube. There was no internet. I hadn't invented internet phones yet. So what I basically had to do is call up company reps and then Dave Midgley was a really big help. Dave, because he had a company, we were able to buy a lot of stuff and get free samples and get the umbrella girls to come over for lunch and stuff. But we, we managed to learn how to do it on our own. And now I'm more than happy to share what I know, which I, you can be the judge of what I know. And usually what happens when you, when you see anything I do, if, if you haven't watched any, any really amount of the videos, you say, wow, this guy's sloppy. Wow, this guy doesn't have new tools. Wow, he doesn't have a big shop. Wow, he doesn't, he talks funny. Wow, this, wow, that. And at the end of it, he's got a, a part to die for. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's really accurate. Well, I know between Dave and I, we made some killer model plane parts that carbon fiber fuselages, twin engine planes, stuff that not many people have been able to do. Few. A very short list. Okay, now this is the tricky part, and again, this is not... This, this is strictly, strictly the whole idea of this is, the, the basic idea, we want to leave, if we were doing a structural part, we'd want to get all the resin, extra resin out. We'd want to vacuum bag this, put it in heat, whatever. In our case, we just want to leave just enough resin on. I don't care if this part weighs two ounces more, but what I want to do is go into my little uh, supply of trowels, pick an appropriate trowel, Keep the jar with me, start in the middle, and work like a sunburst, troweling off all the extra resin. I want to leave some on. Again, this is not really a struct, there's a little spider or something just fell into the paint. 
You'll be sorry you did that, baby. Sometime I feel, when I'm done with making one of these parts, I feel like I fell into the tub of glue or whatever. Anyway, an interesting little project, if, if you have any interest in this, of course. We've made other stuff on our YouTube channel. And we will be making a part for Luciano real soon, as soon as he gets Okay, I see the resin's on here now, and I just want to make sure I get... We got both layers on here. Just trowel that a little bit more. Anything looks like a little imperfect one right there. And again, I've said before, I want to leave enough resin on this part. I don't want to squeeze it all out. I want to have enough on here that I can, and hopefully, do a light sanding on this and then put the urethane clear finish on. See how strong this is? I don't think this will crack. And it took, you remember these plexiglass parts, they're 25, 26 years old. Maybe, maybe older because they were made as replacement parts for the bike when it was new. Who knows? Anyway, that does have to sit overnight. Now again, I've chosen just to come back to this in a day, a day or maybe even two days. It's a, it's a project. There's no reason to rush it. And we'll pick this up the next time we have a session working on the uh, windshield. And it's still raining out there as you can imagine and it's always it's always tempting to just sit here and try to wait for the rain to stop but I think we're done for the day and we will wait until the clouds go away and I think that's really gonna be a nice part I'm kind of happy about the way that turned out okay today this has been dry in 24 hours of course some edges of this are still soft and we can use them the parts that have drips of it, resin on them we can't use, but I'm going to trim off just using an ordinary pair of scissors. Just trim that back. And then the final little bit, the way I do this, the final little bit I'll do either with the Dremel tool or with a, a sheetrock knife. I want to get it right up to the edge as close as possible. But I like to first thing get this off because if you're using a Dremel tool and one of these carbon threads gets caught, it wraps around it and sometimes you break the shaft. So getting all, in other words, the idea is to get all the soft stuff off, leave all the hard stuff, and you can either grind it, cut it, there's a number of ways of doing it. Now the other thing to consider, and be careful, the this, this stuff that already has resin in it actually turns out to be like a razor blade. You don't want to get this under your fingernail. The idea is to get as much of the loose stuff off before you use any kind of a cutter. Like this, I try to get most of that off. And most of it, when it doesn't have, even when it has resin on it, you can just cut it with a scissor. Now we have buckets and buckets of cutters here for doing different jobs. But there's one cutter, and it's called a Roto Zip. That's made, it's made for a special machine called a Roto Zip. But we can use it in a Dremel tool. And this is what a Roto Zip looks like up close. You want to be really ultra careful using this and what it does it it can trim the edge it rough trims the edge gets rid of a lot of these extra little edges and also you can just rough cut where the holes would be get that all done and now we got to just finish this edge the rest of that finishing of the edge will do that by hand okay with all these all these pieces and chips and everything off the last Part of this is going to be, I don't want to breathe any of this in, as little as possible. If it was not a rainy day, I would be doing this outside. It's kind of a crappy rainy day. So I'll just take this, this is going right in a dumpster. Okay, whenever I'm doing any sanding in the house on a rainy day, which I'd just love to be able to do this outside, I just use a little simple green water, soapy water. I 
wanted to uh, I wanted to show that because here's the deal. If you don't do it this way, what happens is you get so much dust, you breathe it in. Not good to breathe it in even. But now you can see we've gone from really rough to semi-rough. And the, the simple green, what it does, it helps if there's any contamination, imperfection in here. So we can do the whole thing with the machine, and then we'll do the final little bit by hand. Now the next step on this is some 220 Rhino Wet. And this is the part at which we have to start being careful and not leaving any spots unsanded. I would like this to be totally flat when I'm done. And this part, this will probably take the better part of an hour to detail this out. Because I'm, what I'm going to have to do is to get the edges radius, get everything smooth. By the way, this windshield is really stiff with that carbon on there. I think that's going to, if we do decide to use this part as a permanent part, it's going to at least add some stiffness to that very thin. And I understand why they make the, the body work so thin on a track, the track bike stuff. It is super light. It's probably half the weight of uh, the regular Yamaha parts, but definitely not as stiff, that's for sure. So this is going to take a lot of time. I'm prepared. I got my coffee brewing. I'm using a soft block and I'll just spend probably, I'm just going to guess an hour until I get this all sanded as flat as possible. And I got to keep checking it every once in a while because I don't want to go through into the lower level of carbon. I would just like it to be all scuffed and all of the edges radiused. Now it's usually on a job like this, it's the extra time you put into detail sanding that's going to either make this a really nice part or not that nice. Something that you don't even want or need or whatever. But Now what this does for me too, it opens up the door to since these windshields are about a hundred bucks, any one that, even the R1, that I wanted to do something similar to this, even though these windshields, I think it's just this one that's really vulnerable, but it is, it is an, an intricate little project that's just a very little amount of material and a lot of labor, a lot of hand labor. And since we can't paint today, today we're just going to try to do, get this part prepped and mounted on that can, ready for the next paintable day. Put some, some clear finish on it. I don't know how many coats it's going to take to make it really nice. And then, of course, buff it out. A lot of detail sanding. Now the last thing we're going to be able to get done in this session, we got the prep soil, which is now in the Vlad official green can to match his Benelli prep soil. And we did get this prep. It's ready for the first coat of clear. I'm going to have to fix the tape on the back. Some of the tape did get boogered up a little bit, but this, once it stops raining, and who knows when that could be. We will get several coats of clear on this, wet sand to clear. At some point in time, it should be like a mirror. And we'll 2000 grit it and buff it and then see if we like it and if it fits. Now I know it fits because this, this has already been on the, the motorcycle. I, I know the holes are already the right size and everything. And I will get some, some new bolts. And I've got to fix this tape on the back. Some of the tape did come up. But anyway, we started out this session with a real, a real raggedy end piece. And yeah, you can see it now. I think next time we get to work on this, I think it's going to really start to shape up. Okay, I repaired all that. That's the only part we're going to see down in here. You don't even see it. It disappears into the bodywork of the, uh, the motorcycle. 
that's quite a big deal to get this much done in one day. I'm, I'm really impressed. And I know if I try to do this on anything but a sunny day, I'm going to have, at best, mixed results, and I'd really like this to be nice. Now today, it finally looks like we have a little break in the, uh, the rain. And I say a break. It's supposed to rain on an awful day, but it's not raining right now, so what I'm going to try to do is get this mounted back to that gallon can, mix up some clear, and get the first coats of clear on this. If I can get that drying, then I'll have the rest of the day to work on our other shop projects, but I wanted this to dry at least 24 hours before I do any further sanding or, or buffing out. I'm kind of, kind of happy the way this part worked out. I see the tape didn't stay overnight, but I'll retape that. And that's ready for clear. Now this, of course, is Five Star Clear. This is what we've been using on all our, all our uh, painting projects lately with uh, some pretty good results. Now we're gonna do probably three coats, 20 minutes apart, and then get this out. If it, assuming it doesn't rain, but as soon as I, I'm gonna to have to babysit. As soon as I, it looks like it's gonna rain out here, it's got to go in the garage. But hopefully, I'll get this done in the next hour. One more coat to go, and then that's going to obviously have to be wet sanded down and we decide if we're going to need a fourth coat, but the idea is to build up enough that we can really buff that out to a really mirror shine. Now at this point, the idea is just to get enough material on there and let it sit overnight because the, the edge of the carbon fiber, of course, has all those little waffle pockets we need to fill with clear. And then probably this is going to require, and I'm just looking at it, how it's how it's taking the finish right now. It, it really looks pretty, like it's going to be pretty neat. And I don't know what it's going to look, see the problem is I don't know what this is going to look like once it's on the bike. But but I've invested so little money and, and a few hours of time in between working on other projects. This is kind of a fill-in project. I think that's going to, that might look pretty nice. I don't know. We're not going to know until we actually, it's going to have to dry at least a couple days before I even buff it out and install it. But right now, I have that much of the clear on. This is going to be another 20 minutes, and I'm going to babysit it here. Now, because it's a little chilly out here, and this, I thought this would be something that uh, I could share. Because it's chilly, it's about 50 degrees out here, and it's looking like rain. What I did, I hooked up the hairdryer. Let me just show this. And just to make sure that we're not in that thing where it's so cold, I just been babysitting it. I have to be outside anyway for the next 20 minutes. Running a hair dryer on it will just get the, the material to set up a little nicer. It looks like it's setting up pretty good now anyway. But if it's if it's below 50 degrees, this is a good good idea. Anyway, one more coat. I think I'll go have a cup of coffee, come back. Get another coat on that, and I'll be happy here. And I'm, I'm very happy. It looks like we're going to beat the rain today. We haven't been winning all these battles lately, so.
Looks like we beat the weather. That's got to go into the shop to dry, into the garage. We lucked out today. Now at the end of every session, I want to see what I, how this is drying up. Oh boy, when that's buffed out, I think that's going to really look nice. I always say it's if you could see your hand in it, that's the whole test. Well, you could watch TV in it. Anyway, from this experience of having uh, these windshields break constantly, I hope we've come up with a permanent solution for our beloved FZR, which uh, I'm not sure. I think if I had the regular body work, and uh, this would be a whole different ball game. But at this, I'm hoping that this is going to be a solution to the problem, and we'll find out. Anyway, we got to put this aside to dry. We'll pick this up next time we get a work session going. Well, this is dried up overnight, and today's plan is to get some thousand grit paper, get this as smooth as possible, and get one more coat of clear on it. The sort of objective here is just to sand out any of the dust, the little imperfections that are still in here. I may have to take it off of this can. I don't know if it's going to be too inconvenient to sand it, but to get it all as flat and smooth as possible and then get that final coat of clear on. I'm guessing it's going to be about an hour to do this. I'm going to take my time, of course. I would like to have that final coat to be laid down as flat as possible, nice and smooth. And then, of course, that coat will get sanded with some 2000 grit and we will be buffing away. Really excited about how this looks. I didn't know if I was going to like this. To be honest, I didn't know if this was going to look, uh, well, or how it was going to look. But, you know, when, you, when you're making a part that really not many, you, I don't know anybody has this, not many, anybody, you don't know how it's going to look. Let me go answer the phone. And so this is what we want, is that dull, flat, that whole the whole, flint, the whole finish on that to be dull and flat, and and maybe even today, get that final coat of clear on there. Now what we're waiting for now is an appropriate time to spray that last coat of clear. It's definitely not going to be today, but again, we can't rush. This is a part that I know is going to look, as, as I'm working on it and looking at it, I'm liking it more and more and more. It may be a real keeper, so I really don't want to take a, take any chance at all. I'm going to have raindrops in there or whatever. So, and we'll just wait for an appropriate day to spray clear. It's all sanded and ready to go. And now today, to clear that we sprayed late last night when Mark was here, the last thing, I need to sand this out with 2000 grit and buff it out. Now the first thing I want to do is take some 2000 grit paper, some soapy water, do a little test. The test is to see if the paint is hard enough to wet sand out yet. It probably will be. It's been drying for two days, so I just do a little test. Now the idea is to get out all the little dust that may be in here from painting outside, any little fish eyes, any little thing. It's got to be perfectly flat with 2000 grit before we go get the buffing wheel. Now usually this could be a little time consuming, but that's what they make cups of coffee for. And here you have to really be patient. The thing is to keep the sandpaper very wet because that flows away all the, the, the paint that you're sanding off. Now it's funny, when I started making this part, I had, I had mixed feelings. I said, eh, maybe this is not going to be what I want. The more I've worked on it, I've really come to like it. And we'll see when we actually get it installed and uh, get the feedback from the peanut gallery. Okay, so let me just show this. And I showed it in real time, not in some kind of Photoshop thing. What we're looking for is just to get everything flat, block flat, just like that. 
Now, as I'm getting, I got about half of this done already. I'm finishing it off with a hard block just to get it as level as possible. And any time I spend with the with the 2000 grit, it's just going to make the buffing out of it that much easier. And because this is a focal point, it's right on top of the bike where you're going to see it. If this were a lower fairing or something, it might not pay to detail it out this much, but it certainly pays on a part you're going to see. And especially on this part, I, I'm sure there are people that are going to come over and say, Oh, yeah, where did you get that windshield? Oh, yeah, I got it from... Uh, <clears throat> And, and that's part of the fun of motorcycling for everybody, of course. Everybody wants to have a unique motorcycle or something that's unique or different or cute or cool or sexy or whatever. Now, it just takes, and this is the part when you try to, I remember when Glenn was working here and doing his green Kawasaki, it just takes time and you don't realize how much time it takes and all of a sudden you look at the clock and two or three hours have gone by but the end result is once that's flat and you've got rid of all the little dust and any little fish eyes or anything, that part will buff up very easily. Now I was pretty careful in the, the total sanding of this out to get as many or maybe even all of the flaws out. We're ready to buff it out. I gotta go get the, the laundry basket full of buffing stuff, but that's pretty much what it's gonna look like after 2000 grit and it'll be ready for some of the compound, we'll try a couple of different compounds and see what's going to cut that paint. We can get rid of this. Look at all this sandpaper. Yes! Good feeling when that's done. Now I'm going to try to see if, because we don't have with 2000 grit, there aren't many scratches, may not be any in fact. See if we can go right to the fine cut. Just see. It will only take a minute and we'll know. As soon as you see that the, that the shine is coming up, you know you're home free all. And it's a question of just spending an hour or two, uh, maybe two hours here, we'll detail it out. Actually, the, day, the way the day is working out, I may even get this installed today, because it's another just another rainy day. Something we haven't had too many of here. Let's just see if we're getting close to having some shine. Now this is the rough cut. This this really doesn't put the final shine on, but you can see we're going to have a shiny part very, very soon. Now I always finish it off with the, the really soft pad. There's one pad even softer than this, the white one. But, and the, the ultra fine 460. nice about doing this at the very end you really you, it looks it has that deep look oh yeah and who would have thought just a, a week or two ago this was nothing but a cracked windshield yeah well, it, it's coming along a little more buffing a little more polishing we'll be ready to install it now the only thing left I have to pull off all the tape off the back, clean up the back. There's always some residue of the tape and everything on here, but I think that really, really exceeded my wildest dream. I had no idea it was going to come out that good. And because of the rainy day, and uh, I'm going to have hopefully a, an hour or so to snap that in place and see what it looks on a final bike.
Now mounting it up is always a pain getting the front, the front two bolts in just such a pain because you can't get your hands in there once the windshield's in place but other than that it's a pretty straightforward install. Now, one little tip if you have an FZR or any bike where it's hard to get the first bolt started on the windshield you can't get your hand in there well what I do is I tape the nut so it's in place now I can get the vice the uh, the long nose pliers down in there I just can't get my hand that holds the nut in place while I'm getting the screws started and it's only the front two bolts that that applies to good little tip if you have an FZR I hope you enjoyed the uh, video of making this windshield and it certainly was an interesting project thanks for watching